fucking shamed of yourself. You're fucking scum. They're fucking pigs! Patriarchy. Fucking rape apologist, incest supporting, woman hating, fucking scum. You woman here! Patriarchy fuckface! You, and your sons, and your everybody, and your friends, and your fucking men! Fucking scum! This is what men's rights look like! This is what men's rights look like! This is what men's rights look like! Feminist theory is not the Bible. It is not the Declaration of Independence. It is not the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. You're damn right we target feminist ideology. Feminist ideology teaches nothing but hate and contempt for men and boys. Feminism must be like the psychedelic drug. I swear to God, because nothing they say is remotely close to reality. We are going to continue to call feminists out on their hate and bigotry. And we really don't give a damn if they like it or not. Well, you know what, feminism? If you don't like the rule of law, then don't, you know, don't be part of society. Go somewhere else. Blue Collar Red Pill. With your host, the one Dan Army, Dan Aarons. And Jack Nightrunner Barnes. Samantha Allen, are you listening? I hope you are. I just have a, a, a brief message for you. Now, Samantha, we're both adults. That means we're equals. You know, Dan and I are probably going to say some things tonight that you're probably not going to like, but you're an adult, so you should be able to handle it like an adult. Now, I know that you've taken several classes in feminism and that you seem to be a social justice warrior. Now, if your mind has been brainwashed by the ideology of feminism and taking those feminist classes, which that's what those classes are designed to do, by the way, then I suggest you bite the pillow and go to your feminist happy place. It'll all be over shortly. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Blue Collar Red Pill Radio. Danny, are you there? I am, Jack. Time to liven things up for another week. Enjoy our Mondays. Jeez, it's becoming like, you know, uh, Monday, late, Monday night uh, football, isn't it? Oh, man, I get excited every Monday. I just like, it's tonight's radio night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How's things down south of the water there, Jack? Oh, man, I, for the past, like, five days, it has done nothing but rain. I mean, we've got we've had several inches of rain down here lately. It's well, <laughs> it's hot and wet. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Uh, what about you, Danny? How's the weather up there? Actually, we had a great weekend. Wonderful uh, weather for it. Uh, we had wonderful weather up here. Uh, Keeping busy. Things are generally buzzing. Uh, fairly good. Um, you'll notice that uh, uh, my video made uh, the recent article over at. Uh, um, uh, National Post by Robin Urbank, and uh, I really have to say that uh, Urbank, sorry, not Ur- Urbank. Um, I have to say I'm kind of happy about that. Get on over there and drop a comment in there, guys, or uh, you know, enjoy yourself a little bit. Um, so that's kind of cool. Been wonderful times, busy, busy times. Um, other than that, man, I'm gearing up for uh, this uh, upcoming week's uh, week next weekend's Cactus Festival in Dundas which means that uh, I'll be going down through the crowds and grabbing sound bites like I usually do every year, uh, putting politicians on the spot, uh, ask, you know, trying to put them on the spot. They, 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 they kind of run and hide when I come a-calling. Uh, as a matter of fact, one called me the foreskin guy. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, when my message is always that men face issues from, cradle to, from the cradle to the grave. And, uh, you know, it begins with the, the uh, circumcision, male genital mutilation, and ends with us dying on average five years earlier. But all she wants to think about, just like a true feminist, is genitals. Yep. Kind of like, uh, kind of like Samantha Allen, uh, the, uh, the, the person we're going to be talking about tonight. Now, she wrote an article for the Daily Dot. As a matter of fact, she's written several articles over here, and I'm going to give out the name to her website. Uh, Danny, if you wouldn't mind dropping it in the chat room, um, it's uh, www.samanthaleeallen.com. 
dot com. That's S A M A N T H A L E I G H A L L E N. So uh, go over there and check it out. She's got several, I mean, a couple dozen articles over there at least. Um, yeah, um, they, uh, you, you got a chance to go through her website. What did you think about some of her articles? Uh, there were some interesting ones. Um, you know, uh, typical feminist writing. Uh, I, I will say that, uh, you know, I'll give credit where credit's due. She calls out the, the, the really radical femmes for tran- uh, turf being turfish. turfish. Uh, she takes a swipe at Kathy Brennan. Uh, you know, I'll give her credit for that. Although I don't know why. I still don't know why the SPLC hasn't taken a swipe at that twit. That that twit fucking Brennan. That, you know, uh, why, don't you, why don't you explain and to her, everyone what turf is? Uh, those, trans, uh, trans exclusionary ra- radical feminism. Uh, and you know, and here's another thing, though those uh those 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 a lot of the information that uh, uh these feminists use to expose these these rad fems was first originally exposed by our very own Agent Orange. Uh, so, you know, make sure to get, download Agent Orange files, read through them, spread them around liberally, you know, like, uh, geez, they go with everything, you know. It, it, it's like the color black. <laughs> it goes with everything. Yeah, Samantha, if you are listening, download the Agent Orange files. Um, that will help you as far as you, in your um, your arguments with radical feminists it helps expose them. Uh, go over there and check that out. Uh, but yes, yeah, she uh, she she did she she wrote that article about that, and uh, and uh, that's great. That's a good thing. But she seems to be a um, a social justice warrior. She talks quite a bit about privilege. Oh come uh, on, let's call her what she is. She's a vaginot. <laughs> I don't like a dug or not, but she's a feminist social justice war- justice warrior. She's a vaginot. A vagina, I like it. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that. I like that, Danny. That's a good one. <laughs> um, but yeah, she wrote it. She wrote several articles on the Daily Dot. One of them, also, the one we're talking about. Hold on. There's, all, hold on. Okay. There's, another, there's also another. There's also another sign that you're dealing with a fad, a vagina. Their panties are always in a bunch. They're always complaining about something. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, I, I think we got the beginnings of a. Uh, uh, of an urban urban dictionary definition here, vaginot, social justice, vaginot. Femi- feminist social justice warrior, uh, you know, panties in a bunch, and uh, you know, somewhat off kilter, uh, you know, a little bit <laughs> off. Anyways, Lenny, sorry, up, man, l- listing a little to starboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think they're listing to port, and they've been at the port drinking too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm damn it, feminist theory, man. They're not li- they're not listening to Starboard. No, no, no. They're not they're not charting on the northern course. No, no, no. They are they're in, they're off on port side and they are drinking like drunken sailorettes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, she uh, Samantha Allen wrote an article on the Daily Dot entitled Five Signs." Uh, well, crap. Hang on. Five signs you're dating a Reddit troll. Um, Danny, why don't you, uh, why don't you take us into that? Sure. I just give us a quick intro. It's a bit of a long winded piece. You know, she is a social justice warrior, so she wants to pick apart every little nuance and create, you know, a kerfuffle, a mountain out of a molehill or uh, a mountain or out of some sort of mound. I don't know. I, I think it has to do with the vaginite, you know, mentality. Um, anyways, <laughs> um, so uh, she talks. Uh, she she begins uh, opening up with uh, talking about a Reddit user named What What an Ass uh, just discover has just discovered that her husband is a vile internet troll. Oh, uh, I guess I should link the article in the chat room. Sorry about that, there, folks. Rafer, I see Volvin. Yes, kind of like Vulcan, but not quite. Uh, I don't know. The, for a sci-fi thing, we could go with that. Um, okay, so yeah, back to the article. Uh, internet troll who spends his spare time harassing teenagers on Tumblr. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not just teenagers on Tumblr. Uh, there's uh, there's some old red-headed crows on, on, on Tumblr, too. They are. <laughs> how, you, big, how you doing, Big Red? How's that patriarchy fuckface working out for you? Oh, I mean, they, all uh, act like, <laughs> they all act like teenagers, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, um, so anyways... Um, but it gets worse. She's pregnant. Oh, yes. In a few short months, the chronic harasser of women she's married to. 
harasser of women. Now she automatically assumes that, you know, a harasser of women. You know, I'm going to read out the article, but it doesn't seem that, you know, it doesn't really label uh, harassing of women. It just says, you know, I'll get to that comment in a minute here. Um, father of a baby girl and her disbelief, what, what an ass posted her experience to our relationships, Reddit's right, relationships. My husband left the browser open on our laptop after he went to work this morning. I was disgusted at what I found. Hmm. Okay. My husband is a troll. So she went snooping. Not really nice. Kind of, you know, a little violation of privacy there. I'd say that's kind of naughty, naughty in a relationship. Um, but, you know, when, it, when, when a feminist does, does it, you know, I guess it's all right. Um, my husband is a troll, a really fucking nasty troll. He leaves horribly mean comments to all kinds of people. I don't see, I don't see this woman shit here. I see all kinds of people. I don't know how, I, you know, Samantha Allen's already, you know, jumped the gun here and said that, you know, um, you know she's uh, harassing teenagers on Tumblr. All kinds of people. All right, so, you know, I don't, I don't say teenagers. I, I don't know. I don't know where she gets this from. Um, uh, they're filled with racist slurs, awful insults. I was horrified, completely horrified. My husband is a nice gentle man who is supportive and kind. In our nine-year relationship, we fought three times total. I never thought this uh, is a behavior he would take part in. Uh-oh. So your, your husband has some online activities that uh, are perhaps that he does not wish to share in mixed company and god forbid that uh you know uh, that you know that would happen cuz you know what is it that feminists claim all the time about you know women's safe space where they can kind of you know take part you know take part in the ugly things about men anyways jack back to the article there well, I, I just want to make a, a couple of quick comments here. Uh, you know, if he did use racist slurs, that's not something we're supporting. But I don't think that she should have went through his computer, even though he left his browser open. And, uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, uh, Samantha is making it into women. And the, this uh, what, what an ass, her comment, is simply saying people. Well, we know... This is feminism, right? I mean, women are people. Men are something else. When you know, we're not human, right? That that's kind of what that's uh, alluding to, there, isn't it? But yeah, uh, the article goes on. So, if this Reddit user's experience has rattled you, you might want to double check that the man you're swapping gimmicks with one day. Blah, 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 one day knows how to behave himself online. Well, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, you know, my wife does not dictate my behavior. I'm a grown man. I'm not a boy. I don't need someone watching over me to make sure I behave properly. You know, that's, that's what you do to children. I'm not a child. And men, grown men are not children. It's not your place to dictate their behavior. But anyway, going on. That's why I've prepared a quiz for you comp comprised of five questions that you can ask the man in your life in order to determine the likelihood that he is an internet troll. I can personally guarantee that this quiz is accurate with absolutely no margin for error. So if your man fails, then was that DT MFA dump that motherfucker's ass and move on. All right. Yeah. She can personally guarantee that this quiz is accurate with absolutely no margin for error really well um let's get into the quiz shall we you got any comments so far danny uh, i'll take that as a no uh the number one question the first question what do you think of seth mcfarlane what's he got to do with it well anyway Start here. This is a troll determining equivalent of the it's is it bigger than a bread box question in, in 20 questions. It will quickly allow you to eliminate a wide range of possibilities in one fell swoop. The McFarlane query, is, as I call it, will help you understand what kind of man you're dealing with and whether or not further inquiries are necessary. Why Seth McFarlane? Because Seth McFarlane is what would happen if you gave your teenage brother $150 million and his own TV show. His brainchild family guy is, a, is the prize pony of so-called equal opportunity offenders. 
people who justify being an asshole to minority groups because they're asshole to all of them. Well, no, 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 he's not. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of Family Guy. It's just it's not my cup of tea. It, you know, I, it's just one of them things I, I could take it or leave it. But I have watched a few episodes, and my brother is a huge fan. Uh, he's an asshole to everyone. He makes jokes about everyone. Nothing is sacred. Okay? So, you know, saying that he is, he's only an asshole to minorities, no, that's a lie. That's wrong. Oh, I that love might... Family Guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing, nothing is sacred. Nobody is sacred. No group is sacred. Um, hell, even Seth MacFarlane even goes on in uh, American Dad to insult aliens, otherworldly creatures. Nobody is nothing. Nothing is sacred to that guy. He is a comedic genius. Yeah, uh, it's fucking hilarious. Uh, I, I saw his movie Ted. I really liked it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that was that was. A, I, I like the movie. Yeah. Um, if you, if you guys have not seen Ted, go go watch it. Just make sure there's no children around when you do it. It's funny as hell, but it's not for children. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He's definitely adult humor oriented. Um, he uh, um, he's got another movie out. I think it's a million ways to die in the old west or something like that. He's got a, He's actually on camera in this one instead of just playing the voice. Um, he, he's got a really He's got a really fucked up sense of humor, but it's fun. I find it incredibly hilarious. Now, um, uh, uh, but, I would 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 he uh, you know would he actually be any of these things in real life? No, but would he say them as a joke? Yeah, hell yeah, and they are meant as a joke. And you know, um, they, they take them for what they're worth. They're they're fucking jokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Finishing this one out. Uh, if your man responds to this question with a blistering critique of McFarland's politics, you're in the clear. If he lights up and shows you his Family Guy box set, you should be worried. Your man has possibly been mean to at least one woman on the internet at some point in his life. Okay, well, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold, hold the wait the fuck. Just wait just one fucking minute. I, as a man, am not required to be nice to every single person who has a vagina simply because they have a vagina. Get that through your head, Samantha. Just because you have a vagina does not mean you're special. You're a human being just like I am. If I treat you like shit, well, if I treat you like shit, there's a reason for it, number one. But I'm not going to give you a special treatment simply because you have a vagina. I'm going to treat you as my equal. You know, equality, you know, look it up, feminist. Okay? Anyway, uh, Danny, you want to take the next one? <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just I'm just perusing through my Family Guy collection here. Uh, <laughs> I I guess I won't be getting any uh, uh, OK Cupid dates uh, offers from uh, Samantha either. Uh, you know, oh well, uh, I'm heartbroken. I, I'm just uh, you know I'm severely heartbroken about that. All right, question number two: Have you ever heard of Anita Sarkeesian? <laughs> Well, I boy, flip, <laughs> boy, have we? <laughs> well, well, I flip out of my uh, Family Guy collection and into my uh, favorite videos on Anita, Anita Sarkeesian, and I'll slip in the plug on for F Thunderfoot on those ones. There, <laughs> that guy really fucking nails her fucking beautifully. Um, anyways, on with the fucking article. Um, this question is particularly useful if your man is a video gamer. And if your man plays video games, your troll bar should already be set to high alert anyways. Um, on the Venn, Venn diagram of the internet, the interse intersection of trolls and male gamers is particularly bustling one, and there's no one that male video gamers hate more than Anita Sarkeesian. And for, well, it's not just male video gamers that dislike... Uh, Anita, um, I don't play video games all that often, and, and I hate the lying bitch <laughs> for her lies. I don't really hate her. Uh, you know, I, I think she's a pitiful creature, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I'd rank her right up there with, you know, someone faking cancer for, for money. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she's, she's just kind of despicable. I, I shouldn't say that I hate her. Hate's a strong word. It's a strong emotion. But I do despise her. I think she's a you know a cretin who uh, is using feminism for profit. 
Um, anyways, uh, Miss Sarkeesian is a feminist. Yes, she is. <laughs> and she's hated by, <laughs> disliked by a lot of non-feminists. Um, feminist media critic who produces a YouTube web series called Feminist Frequency. In 2012, she successfully crowdfunded a series of videos called Tropes vs. Women, in which she critiques the representation of women in video games. But this crowdfunding campaign also made her into a lightning rod for internet trolls. If you want to see a sample of the sort of people that harass her, you can read this blog post, but uh, be warned, you'll see every slur under the sun. That's right, every slur under the sun, and that's all they are. They are just internet pokes. I highly doubt that there was, you know, any real intentions. Uh, you know, they are just, they're, they're probably mostly threatoids at best. You know, no real credible threats at all. Nothing like, you know, ones that are pointed at uh, uh, men's human rights activists. The ones like, you know, we should take, maybe we should take this group for a one-way walk in the woods, which I've seen posted by local feminists here in Toronto. And, you know, but that's not hateful at all. Anyways, I digress a little bit here. Um, so if your man is a gamer and you're worried he might be a troll, try casually dropping her name. Does he instantly begin to foam at the mouth? I'm sorry, but you're married to a troll. Does he look unusually agitated as he gives you a, a completely unsolicited 20-minute long lecture about the harmful objectification of men? He's probably a troll. Oh, wait a minute here. Uh-oh. Wait, does Samantha not like the fact that men are objectified in those video games? They are, you know, killed routinely. They are, you know, in gruesome ways. They are just, you know, cannon fodder for, for gun sights in a lot of these video games. They are portrayed for their usefulness and their ability to protect and serve women. Jeez. But, no, you know, we can't have that fucking... We can't have Anita or, or, you know, the feminist lens looking at that sort of shit and calling it wrong. No, no, no. Uh, you know, that would be, you know, kind of counter-feminist productive. That would be... how uh, That would be unvaginot. Anyways. Um, uh, -da -da. He's probably a troll. Back away slowly. Does he recognize the name and say something that sounds feminist or at least empathetic? You're in the clear. Go ahead. Make a baby with him. Oh, so you're going to base, you know, your baby-making decision on whether or not he likes... Uh, you know, Anita Sarkeesian. Wow, geez. Uh, I kind of like Anita, Anita Sarkeesian, you know, as long as she doesn't open her mouth, um, you know, because uh, everything she spews is nothing but garbage, horse crap, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a bunch of lies for profit. Um, she is kind of, you know, pleasing to the eyes. I will give her that. She is not exactly hideous. She's, uh, you know, not... Uh, uh, she's not like, uh, you know, some of the, the uh, very radical feminists out there. Anyways, Jack, up to you there. Uh, back to you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that whole Nita Sarkeesian one, that's, they, that, that's great. That, that's just awesome. Uh, yeah, um, th the whole thing about gamers being trolls, um, not all of them, Samantha. Not all gamers are like that, Samantha. And uh, you, most of them have got a good reason to dislike Anita Sarkeesian. Um, you know, you were talking about her uh, her crowdfunding for those videos. What, she just ripped people off. She got what, like one hundred fifty thousand dollars or something like that for to make YouTube videos that she had already made. She just took the ones she already made and punched them up just a little. And I've heard a. Uh, um, I've heard some people talk about that she used some copyrighted material on some of her videos, and that um, the the original creator of that material is uh, is a little bit upset with her for that. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but yeah, um, uh, moving on here. Okay, number three, which amendment in the Bill of Rights do you think is the most important? Well, okay, it's starting just just by that question. Um, uh, you know, it'd be tough for me to, to pick one, actually. But um, you know, she's got some here she's listed. Um, this is a fun question that every couple should ask each other just to build intimacy and to prepare to compete on game shows in the constitutional, organized, dystopian future of nightmares. Okay. Here's, uh, here's a ledge. Here's a legend for his potential response to let you know what the, they might mean in terms of his potential 
for trolldom. Okay, the Tenth Amendment. Your man is a passionate about states' rights. Racists and homophobes love states' rights. Be afraid. Uh, Samantha, I did not take the opportunity to look up where exactly you live. <clears throat> but um, for, for all of you listening who live outside the United States, I'm going to kind of give you a, a brief explanation of the whole states' rights thing. Um, our country is unique in many ways. Uh, the United States, we, uh, we have a federal government and we have state governments. Um, the reason that is necessary is because our country is very diverse on many levels, culturally, uh, you know, uh, climate, uh, geography. You know, so each region has its own issues that it has to deal with. Just, just an example: uh, the state of Florida has to worry a lot about hurricanes. They don't have to worry much about snow. Versus the state of uh, Montana, they don't have to worry about hurricanes, but they get a lot of freaking snow. Uh, on a cultural level, um, you've got the people in the southwestern United States. They share a strong. Or Latino heritage uh, versus, let's say, people in Louisiana. That's the Cajuns. Um, you know, um, they, you know, those people speak a dialect or whatever you want to call it, a French down there. You know, so these different cultures, you know, they have their own problems that they have to work out. So it's very important that the states are able to make laws themselves, S simply because uh, you know, if you make a law for California and try to apply it to the whole country. In some places, it's going to be like, well, that's pointless. And then in other places, the law that's good in California is going to be a problem in other places. So it, you know, it's important that the states are able to govern independently, but it's also important that we have a federal government that kind of holds everything together. It has to be a balance. Too much power to the states and the, uh, the United States, the Union, falls apart. Too much power to the federal government, you get laws that don't work. So it's very important that states have rights of their own. Now, she wants to say that this is racist, or that racists and homophobes love states' rights. Well, uh, there's a lot of people that love states' rights, Samantha. And anyone that knows anything about the United States and the government knows that it's very important that states maintain certain rights. Okay, um, you know, uh, I, you've been in college for a long time. You haven't learned that yet. Get your money back. Um, well, she she just for you know she just didn't look. She she didn't even read the fucking cover of the book. I'm pretty sure the name of the country is the United States. <laughs> so states have you know rights, constitutional laws, and stuff. The ability to pass those things. I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very important. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a truck driver. Most people know that. But, I, you know, I, I have literally, in my career so far, in uh, uh, seven, eight years, something like that, I have logged over a million miles in a truck, literally over a million. I've seen almost all of the United States many times over. And I can, you know, I was... Uh, respect states rights I you know I, I understand the need for them because I go to these different places and I see the different things the, the different cultures the different uh, geographical areas and what they have to deal with you know they're different problems problems that I don't have where I live but it's a problem over in this other state so it, they need to deal with it and my state is not a problem so why do we need to make a law for something that to fix something that you know fix a problem that doesn't exist right well um, because, you know, the sale of beachfront property in Arizona is a really big state. You know, it's, it's a really big issue that should be dealt with, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, well, look, she's, she's, she's just simply a, a dyed-in-the-wool fucking federalist. I, when, it, when it comes right down to it, I, I, I mean, essentially what she wants is she wants one overbearing central government. Fuck states' rights. Um, fuck individual people's problems and individual people living in geographic areas make to to be um, uh, independent. 
in solving their issues. Self-determining, no, instead, uh, her idea of states' rights essentially is, fuck that, let the federal government do everything. Didn't one of the founding fathers say the, the, go- the, the government that governs best governs the least or something like that? Oh, man. We haven't been there in a very, very, very long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well, you're wasn't right, that James. Benjamin Franklin or something? Like, Benjamin Franklin or, or Thomas Jefferson or something like that? I, I it was one of, the, one, of the, one of the really good thinkers from back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Uh, hey, hey, guys, we're coming up on the 30-minute mark. Uh, why don't we take a quick music break? there jack yeah yeah i made it through all right cool Uh, so you were at you were at the 10th amendment and uh we kind of had a nice little uh, discussion about that you're on to her next one which is the ninth yep the ninth amendment uh your man picked the foundation for roe v way good egg well okay you know most of us here are uh 
uh, pro-choice, but just because a person is pro-life doesn't make them an evil, awful person, and it doesn't make them a troll. You know, they have an opinion that you disagree with. Um, doesn't make them a bad person, Samantha. But anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, the Eighth Amendment: No cruel and unusual punish punishment for you guy, for your guy. It's unlikely that he'd be cruel to strangers. Well, not necessarily. Cruel and unusual punishment um, doesn't mean that he won't. You know, if he believes in that uh, uh, or supports the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, doesn't mean he won't say something mean to someone. Okay, I mean that's that's a little different, uh, Samantha. Uh, you probably need to grow up a little bit and grow a little bit thicker skin. Someone saying something mean to you is not cruelty. It's not unusual punishment. You know, okay? Uh, grow up a little bit. All right, the seventh, sixth, fifth, or fourth. He's really into criminal justice, but probably not a troll. Breathe a sigh of relief. Wait just a minute there. Just if someone supports a good foundation for our criminal justice system, does it mean, you know, that, that means that they're not a troll? That they won't go trolling on the internet? You know, what the fuck? Anyway, the Third Amendment. If he picks an amendment that this useless, you should just dump him anyway, even if he's not a troll. Okay, well, I'm, let me read you the Third Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Uh, this comes from uh, Cornell University Law School. Described by some as a preference for the civilian over the military, the Third Amendment forbids the forcible housing of military personnel in a citizen's home during peacetime and requires the process to be prescribed by law in times of war. Okay, now wait a minute. This is an amendment forbidding the federal government from stationing a soldier in my home, in your home if you live in the United States. Uh, I think that's a pretty good fucking amendment to the Constitution. In other words, you know, if the government says, well, we're going to station a soldier in your home that's going to live with you and watch you, you can say, no, you're not. The Constitution forbids it. Go the fuck on somewhere. And there's nothing they can do about it. I think that's a pretty good fucking amendment, don't you, Danny? Um, so the, if I understand this right, you can you can tell the the arm, you know your your standing armed forces that they can uh, they 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 can't lodge in your your, your dwelling, right? right? Exactly. But I'd, um, I'd have a hard time saying no, but uh, yeah, you, you know, yeah, you do have that right, I guess. You know, and I guess that's pretty important. Uh, well, where it comes from is the is the uh, the British Army back you know back before. I, yeah, you used, yeah, used to just walk right in and say, "Hey, we're commandeering and, and you know taking over your abode well, and housing soldiers here." Well, it's not just that; they would put soldiers in your home to watch you if they thought that you were uh, sympathetic to the, uh, you know, to the, uh, the 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 rebels, right? Yeah, you know they. It was like it was like be the same thing as if you if the cops suspect uh, suspected you of, of let's say being a drug dealer, they say well we're going to put a cop in your house that's going to live with you and be with you twenty four hours a day to watch you. you yeah, I, I I yeah yeah you know what I got uh, yeah it's you know it should be a right yeah it is a right you know I, I agree it's a pretty important right um, like I but my personal view is you know I support the troops I mean I support the yeah and in the, in the heads you know the the, the higher ups. But I do support the troops, and if they, you know, needed a place to uh, place to stay, you know, obviously I would make room. Oh yeah, well yeah, obviously. But this is this is more to keep, you know, to keep uh, the government from uh, from infringing on your privacy. Big brother from being too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Okay, the second amendment. Everybody should know this one. But anyway, she says. If he supports the Second Amendment, run seriously, just run. Your man not be my, your man might not be an asshole to people on the internet because he's too busy being an open carry asshole in real life. Well, um, I'd say the Second know, and the Third Amendment are tied in pretty close. Well, I'd yeah. say that they found. I'd say that the founding fathers in the United States, seeing the problems that the Redcoats were 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 inflicting upon uh, free individuals and you know that's why they wrote the second and third amendments you know uh, right yep. in there 
Yeah, uh, you know, just because someone's an advocate for open carry or advocate for uh, c- uh, citizens to have uh, access to firearms doesn't mean they're a bad person. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, you know I, I know that this actually uh, for those of you who live outside the United States, you might not realize this, but uh, the gun control advocates have been pushed back severely in the last few years. We've had some Supreme Court rulings and um, um, other other things of this nature that have pushed them back severely. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, it appears to be that being a person who is anti-gun is now the unpopular opinion in the United States. Um, there is, uh, I read an article, I can't remember where it was, uh, uh, specifically on women who are, who are uh, for various different reasons, some of them home protection, some of them for recreation, some of them they just like to collect guns. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's millions of women that are members of the uh, National Rifle Association, for instance, and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, Samantha, uh, the Second Amendment is very important to a lot of people. And just because someone uh, supports the Second Amendment doesn't make them a bad person, and it doesn't make them an Internet troll. Okay? You know, I'm, um, you know what? I'm, I'm Canadian. we got some pretty strict, useless gun laws up here. Okay? Um, and, and it's always the same old stupid horse shit that, you know, um, you know uh, that, uh, you know, uh, registering guns will stop crime. Well, I'm I'm sorry about that, but criminals don't tend to use, um, you know, guns that are registered. They they kind of don't like themselves to be tracked down, you know. So that that stupid argument they like to use up here in Canada uh, is ridiculous. Now I'm not a gun owner. I have uh, I have I have done target shooting before, and I find it incredibly fun. Uh, um, there is, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it is, you know, it's awesome. Uh, I, I got friends that hunt and trust me, I love Bambi burgers. They are oh so tasty. Um, I, and love them on the barbecue. Um, but, uh, that, uh, that's the way that goes. Um, responsible gun owners, you know, not, a, not a, not a problem with them at all. Um, you know, all the power to them. Uh, hunters provide a, uh, a a needed uh niche in the uh in the grand scheme of things because we have for the most part taken down a lot of the primary uh pri- you know the apex predators that take care of you know the deer species as a matter of fact they are uh having deer up here that are are kind of uh almost getting into the point of starvation because they're overpopulated we don't have the wolves around here anymore Um, so yeah, um, I'm all for, you know, the second amendment. Sure. Yeah. Yep. That's good point, sir, Danny. Okay. The first amendment. Um, now this is where it gets interesting. Okay. She says, uh, if, if your guy, uh, supports the first amendment, this should be a huge warning sign. Trolls cite the first amendment as frequently as college applications as they cite the road not taken. They think that it gives them the right to verbally harass, stalk, and threaten whomever they want without any consequences. If your man picks the First Amendment, just ask him to explain what it means. If he thinks it means that it's a free country and people can say whatever they want, tell him to go back to the playground he learned his politics from and find a new boyfriend. Wait just a fucking minute. You're going to write an article, post it on the internet, and then bitch about the First Amendment? What the fuck? <laughs> Jack, how's that forehead of yours doing? <laughs> has, oh, it damn it. Got, has it still got an imprint of your palm? It's got an imprint of my fucking keyboard. <laughs> oh. oh you know, my. not face palm, face desk. Oh, okay? God. I guess it's better than face stick. <laughs> yes, this vaginot has truly gone off the rails with this one. Bitching about the First Amendment <laughs> while writing about it, you know, while, while using it. Um, yeah, I, James, if my desk hadn't have been there, it might have been face nuts. Oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Troll cite the First Amendment. I, 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 
yeah, we have the right to say some shit, just like what Dan and I are saying about you. Uh, it's not nice, but we have the right to fucking say it. Um, feminists, feminists don't care about those things. They want everybody to have the right to say what they tell them to say. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and they and they also don't want the responsibility for their words either. How you doing, Adele Mercier? We still remember your fucking words. Exactly. Ex- you know, it's a free country. Yes, it. Well, at least it's supposed to be. Uh, get over it. If you can't handle that, maybe you need to move somewhere else. Um, people can say whatever they want. Well, okay, with the exception of maybe going into a crowded movie theater and yelling fire. Okay, yeah, you can't do that. People will get hurt. But, uh, you know, I've said this before, and feminists took, you know, took umbrage at me saying this. And I'm going to say it here on radio. I, Jack Barnes, support the Ku Klux Klan's right to to say their rhetoric. I support their right to do that. Why do I support their right to spew their racist bigotry and hate? Because if I support the, you know, taking away their right, then someone's going to come and take that right away from me. And I don't want that. So I support their right to have their bigoted rallies, and I'll support, support the right to the people that come into those rallies to protest against them. Well, that's also how the SPLC, SPLC got their claim to fame they supported you know the the uh they supported the i believe it was uh, uh neo nazis the the right to have a uh, a parade or something neo nazis to have a parade or something like that but that's how S- the SPLC got the part of their claim to fame supporting you know free speech yeah funny how it's funny how now that they've you know now that they've got all these millions of dollars and rich funding and stuff now how they they're trying to shut down some free speech yeah, really. Uh, but guys, just like listening. just like someone we know here. Hmm. <laughs> are, you, are, are, yeah. your ears, are your ears burning a little there, Sammy? Yeah, really. Uh, everyone listening, this is feminism. <laughs> this is what feminism is. This this person we're talking about. We didn't pick her because she's particularly intelligent, or that her article is particularly intelligent because it's not. We picked her because this is a good example of what feminism is. Okay, Danny, you want to take the uh, the number four there? We've got probably about ten minutes. Yeah, we should zip through this here. Uh, can I borrow your laptop real quick? Ask him this question when he's in the middle of using it. Oh, so purposely interrupt him. You know, he might be busy or something. And then uh, count how long it takes for him to get his computer into a state where he's comfortable handing, handing it over to you. If he passes it over his Im- immediately with his email and social media accounts still open, you're likely to be in the clear. This is a man with nothing to hide. Oh, I think I would pass it on over to you there, Sammy. You might not like what you see, and if that keeps you away from me, then I think I'm a happy camper on that note. (laughs) Um, If he spends 30 seconds meticulously logging out of his email and social media accounts before handing it to you, there might be something going on with him, and trolling is definitely on the table. It's 2014, after all. Men don't just cheat on you. And watch too much porn anymore. Oh, wait a minute here. Are we ignoring the other gender there again? You know, Sa- Sammy, are, are you ignoring the short, you know, this, the, the human, human shortcomings uh, uh, of, you know, women who cheat also? There are, you know, a subset of women and a subset of men who do cheat, you know. Um, anyways, and... Uh, uh, I've, got, I've got something to say real quick about the porn thing. Uh, who the fuck are you to say who, what's too much porn? I mean, um, you know, uh, that, that's to everyone. You know, women like watching porn, too. Too much porn? Uh, guys, if you've rubbed the hide off your dick, spit on it. That'll help. That's all i got to say about too much porn. <laughs> oh, and, and I, I've, I've, got, I've got something to add concerning the whole cheating thing. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think you quite understand, Dan. You need to get with the program here because when a man cheats... He's just a lying, fucking, nasty-ass bastard. But when a, when a woman cheats, it's because a lying, fucking, nasty-ass ass bastard made her do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and let us, let, us not, let us not forget that other little gem that you know, has come up uh, uh, numerous times. Uh, what is it? Uh, somewhere around 
one third of the blood tests for paternity tests are coming back wrong. <laughs> you know, let, let's not forget about that little gem there. Uh, nothing like putting a guy on the hook for 18 years of, uh, you know, slavery uh, under false pre- pre- pretenses. And, uh, you know, a lot of the guys do it willingly, not knowing. You need, you need, to, you need to stop making this about science. I'm sorry. Maybe we need to get the feminist. <laughs> Maybe we need to get the, some feminist lenses on and 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 delve into feminist biology. Yeah, because 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 don't you know fatherhood is entirely subjective, totally dependent on on who the woman thinks would be the best father. But damn, if she won't fucking sue a hospital for multi millions of dollars if she takes home the wrong baby. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's correct. Anyways, I, we got to get zipped through this here. Um, they also obsessively track down and harass people who are different from them in order to feel the fleeting sense of control and superiority that defines their pat- particular version of masculinity. Now, I'm going to call bullshit on you there, Sammy, because there was a while there you did an article for Salon about the Radfems and the Turfs. And you know what? Kathy Brennan is known for fucking tracking people down. Now, there, you know, that falls outside your little fucking generalization here, uh, honey. All right. Kathy Brennan, noted, you know, rad femme feminist, tracked down, has tracked down uh, more, at least one person that I'm aware of. And I believe it was a young uh, transsexual woman. Um, so, yeah, that, that kind of falls outside your box. I've also been doxxed, you know, and tracked down by. Uh, feminists say, and you, let me tell you, it's it's really something seeing where they identify. You know, when they post stickers within a mile of your house, saying "We know where you live," kind of deal. Um, you know th- that that's really kind of interesting. Um, another thing, down my parents, they doxed yeah. my parents. So, yeah, yeah. So you know, let's let's cut the the fucking bullshit about the uh, uh, how it's only men do you know stupid things, uh, criminal acts, really some somewhat criminal acts. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's cut the bullshit on that there, Sammy. Uh, you know, you're supposed to be for gender equality. Well, you know, you bet it, you best start calling out the fucking, uh, uh, the crimes and the, and the, the human shortcomings that are found in women as well as men and stop fucking making it a gendered issue. You fucking bigot. Um, sorry. I, I take a little offense to that stuff. Sorry. My language got a little colorful. I'm, I'm, I'm really, my, my apologies to your virgin eel, virgin ears, fuck face. On with number five. Okay. Do you harass people on the internet? I've saved the direct approach for last. If the direct question, if the indirect questions above are eliciting ambiguous responses, you might just want to raise the topic of internet harassment in a more straightforward way. He might be offended that you ask him this question, <clears throat> but we've all, but we've, but we've all just learned from reddit that it's best to be certain before you tie the knot and make a baby okay well you know um your definition of harassment might be different than my definition of harassment uh what happened to dan that that, that, that's harassment calling you out on your bullshit that's not harassment bitch get over it but uh yeah um jack's parents what's happened to a few what happened to aaron pizzy that's yeah that's harassment all right. Uh, there, there, you would happen to set grand cools when she, when she, when she led uh, in talks across Canada. Um, you know, uh, you know, putting out forth the the notion that men are abused too, and you know, addressing that issue. That was harassment. What, what these, you know, the, what the so-called, you know, Twitter feminist who was it Hemsley who got fucking post traumatic stress disorder from Twitter? Dear God in heaven, they have no idea what what harassment is. They haven't got the slightest, foggiest fucking clue. Yep. Uh, I'm going to just finish the article up here. Samantha Um, Allen is a doctoral fellow in the Department of Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies at uh, Emory University. That's E-M-O-R-Y University. In addition to writing regularly for the feminist gaming blog, The Border House, yeah, yeah, The Border House, her writing has also appeared on Salon, Jacobin, uh, Kotako, K O T A K U, and um, and first person scholar. You can find her on Twitter at and there's the little at sign 
cousin dangerous is dangerous danger yeah danger. danger yeah right danger uh d a n g e r e u x or her web which i've already given you that but yeah dan uh so ends yeah um now I, I, we're I I, I, I I there's rumors and it looks like it's been confirmed here um, uh, to, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it looks like uh, uh, Robin Williams has uh, committed suicide, and this would be another male issue, um, you know, uh, that feminists are, are ignoring. Um, uh, is it is it been confirmed? I've seen articles saying that he had, and I've seen articles saying that it was a hoax. It, it's it's looking more and more like uh, it has been uh, confirmed. <clears throat> Apparently, um, it. Uh, I don't know. I seen something in the in the chat room here, Lifeline, and I'm just looking at it. Um, nope, it does. Uh, nope, that wasn't. Uh, I guess CN- CNN reported it, but we weren't sure if it was. You know, CNN reported it, but I believe also Jessica Valenti. Um, nope, I guess she didn't. Uh, um, there was some chatter going on about Jessica Valenti. I guess uh, we are. Uh, I guess people are. Um, yeah. You know, Exposing I, Jessica's uh, love for male tears and the fact that yeah. uh, those male tears. Uh, Dan, we, we're down to less than a minute, so let, let's close it out. I hate to hear that about Robin Williams, but uh, I everyone. It, I uh, true, but yeah, everyone, um, thanks for listening. Samantha, learn some stuff, please. And uh, uh, Dan, why don't you take us home? All right, folks, thanks for joining us again. Take the red pill. We're signing off for another week. We'll see you next week, all right? Cheers. And don't be a vaginot. Don't be a (laughs) vaginot. Dan and Jack hope you have enjoyed this episode of Blue Collar Red Pill. The song, The Last Ones, by the band Jazar, is used under Creative Commons license and has been modified for this show. Please visit antimissandry.com and a voiceformen.com for more information on the men's human rights movement.